Viva mi gente. Welcome to the Hackensack Meridian Health Stage 17 for another Facebook Live, Radio 1039. Hey, make sure you comment, give me the thumbs up, share it, because today it's all about relationships, honey, because, oh, I got tons of questions for you. We got Tracy McMillan here. She got that new show on OWN. Yeah. Family and fiance, or family fiance? or fiance? Oh, family or fiance? Yeah, because like which one? Yeah. Where are you headed? I'm going family all day. This you show. Are? Oh yeah, okay. like I mean, I'm 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 a, I'm a family girl. Okay. I could love my man, but anything could make a split up. So mm -hmm. I'm more of the family. Um, but looking at the show, but first of all, hold on, hold on, hold on. You yeah. are giving me Cali all day. Oh, yeah. It's because I don't Look, have socks on. No, the uh, yellow, uh, your hair, yeah. the glow. Oh, well. And you're originally from Cali, right? No, I'm from Minneapolis. Get out. Which is this weather we're having today, except uh -oh. six months out of the year. And then you're like, forget, I was about to curse real quick. Yeah. <laughs> That's how sometimes yeah. I feel about New York, where I'm like, F this, I'm out. What are we doing here? Uh, and then I moved to New York. I mean, I did some other stuff. Oh, yeah, and then I moved to California. I went for a week, and I've been there for, I'm not even going to tell you how many years. Get out. Long enough to have a baby who's in college. Get Put it like out. that. Is yeah. that where this all, all right, because I mean, you are not Ooh. only a relationship expert, yeah. you are an author, writer, yeah. like, is this where it all popped off for well, you? Like, let's go down memory lane. Okay, for a minute then. Yeah, um, a second, a so second. I started, I, I worked in TV news for 16 years. Okay. And actually, my very first job was in radio Get in out. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, you have the voice for it. No, Don't but they take were my trying job, to though. get me in that room in the middle of the night, and I was all by myself, and they were like, yeah, just act natural. I'm like, this is really lonely, and I'm about to fall asleep. It's like solitary confinement. It is. So when People they offered me a job at a, the TV news station, that was, it was an AM, an FM, and a television news. I was like TV news all day. So then I went from Portland to New York. I worked at WNBC. Yeah, Sue Simmons funny. and Chuck Scarborough. Yeah, that's right. And then I went to Nightly News, and then I went to California. And then the rest is history. Then you met O, Mama O. That's right. Well, there was a lot in between. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Indeed. But we'll fast forward that's to it right. because I want to get to the relationship. Yes, you know, I got there. relationship problems, yeah. but. <laughs> Not really problems, because I'm in love with my man. Hey, boy. Hi, Cinda. <laughs> that is, yo, I met him on Tinder. But wait, it's not about me. It's what? about you. No. How? Well, here goes one part that it's going to okay. be about me. How did you get down with Oprah? I need to get cliff notes so that when my time shines, we there. Okay. Go ahead. Well, you know what? My feeling about it was like, I just was going to be like the same Tracy I always am. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not going to do like a special Tracy, the Oprah edition. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the real, actual me. And like, I just felt like it was a... Like, I could trust, and it was all right, and I didn't have to be a different person just because I was with Oprah. And I felt like that's kind of what she, I think she responds to. Because I feel like, I think people get like, oh, my God, it's Oprah. I got to be something. Or I think she just wants the real you. And But when you got this family or, or fiancé, yeah. was this after you met her or when you were doing the yes. podcast? So, okay, so here's what happened. I basically was that girl at work who was mm -hmm. talking to you about your relationship when I was supposed to be doing my real job. Okay. Okay. So I was her for like all 16 years of my TV news career. Yeah. Because you know how newsrooms are and like radio stations. We're all talking that's about like each other. Yeah. yeah that's family. Right. There's a lot of people in a room and I would be like, oh girl, you need to do this. Or I'd be like in the bathroom, like solving your relationship problems. And then I'd come out and be like, oh shit, I got to. It's okay. <laughs> we adults here. Okay. Radio 103. We adults okay. around here. Like, oh dang. I, I need to get my job. <laughs> I need to get my work done. So as I said, and then meanwhile, I'm a complete train wreck in my own relationships, but I'm learning as I go. So rather than just having a train wreck and then, you know, just wrecking the next train, every time I would be, I would be doing a little bit better. And as I worked on my own relationships, I started to help other people with everything that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So that all culminated in this piece that I wrote that went massively viral. Yeah, well, you're, why, why you're not married. Why you're not married. And That's then, cold. and that just took it to the next level. And mm -hmm. then I did a TED Talk. So my TED Talk has like 11 million views called The Person You Really Need to Marry. Yeah. So, and plus I've been married and divorced three times. So see, my whole career is about <laughs> you. <laughs> marriage. Yeah. Yes, and how... Everything that I needed to learn turns out to be the things that help other people. So that's kind of how I got here. But, and so Oprah must have read it and brought yes. you on the podcast? And then I, I did Super Soul Sunday because mm -hmm. I have a whole spiritual thing. Like my whole thing is m the problems that I was having in relationships were because I didn't understand what relationships were all about. They're places really where you're there to give something and not get it. 
Okay. Okay. You're like, what? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You that. lost me. I was gonna, I was gonna oh, say yeah. rewind, please, but I'll let you finish it off and then see yeah. if I catch on. Uh, yeah. So it's basically about giving love, and I think most people go into relationships like, okay, I'm gonna be so loved. Yeah. Like I'm finally gonna receive the love that I've. Because we give it so much to everybody else, by the time we want it, I'm like, yo, give me. I'm not giving you no more. You better take it as it is. Exactly. Well, so, but what if you start giving yourself the love, right? Mm-hmm. And then you put everybody underneath and that they're just receiving. It's like one of those chocolate fountains at a wedding where mm-hmm. you're the top and then all the love you're giving to yourself just spills over to the other people. Okay. You're not trying to give it to them from a place of not having it already that you're giving to yourself. Yeah. So that's my whole message. And once I realized that I was the person I needed to love, like I needed to love me the way I wanted a man to love me. That's where it all changed. But who helped you get to your, like, because you're helping everybody else with a relationship, but who's your relationship guru? Well, I've had a lot of different people along the way, but like, ultimately it's been like a spiritual relationship with the God of my understanding. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The higher power. And then from that comes all these other helpers. And honestly, it could be anybody from that lady on the subway who decides to talk to you to therapists that I've had just and so many books I've read and then it's just something that I don't know I just sort of figured it out as I went along I don't know how to say it oh because okay. you know I know it's many like people gift. when we we hear somebody who's a guru or a, right. a, a relationship yeah. expert we thinking you got your stuff all together so no, you're like I'm the opposite I'm the <laughs> anti I'm the okay so you know usually all those people Dr. Laura whoever not to knock Dr. Laura no God of course her. not but like they've been in one marriage for 35 years. I'm sorry. What does she know about my life? You yeah, know true. Because you've my... been with the same thing. You have no problems, no nothing. Uh, yeah. Like you don't, you only learn so much from success. Now you want to start learning something. You start failing. And that's when you start to really get like, oh, now I'm learning. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, I came up in a really hard childhood. Like my dad was a pimp and a drug dealer. He was in prison my whole life. My mom was a prostitute, gave me up at a very young age. So I came into relationships with a lot of trauma, a lot of pain that I was wanting men to, to fix. fill the void. Yeah. And guess what? It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. And, and you know what's funny? I was watching um, an interview before about, and these were men talking about how people get in relationships and you could correct if it's wrong. We all bring our baggage, throw it oh, on the floor no and just say, all right, let's just fix it or ignore it and just build on top That's of right. it. That's right. And it's, in fact, what I'm saying is a relationship. So here's the thing. Like a lot of relationships experts had nothing to offer me in the sense of like, they weren't, they were assuming that you had like a mom and like a dad who came home every night at six o'clock and that you were starting from a place of secure attachment. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not where I was starting from. So most of my relationship problems were coming from all this childhood stuff. And so for me, what I was bringing into a relationship, that pile was a, it was like a giant, it was like, what's the tallest mountain? Mount Everest. Uh, Girl, I'm the worst when it comes to this. That's how big. You could just tell well, me. you're a, not into geography. No, man, yeah, girl, yeah. no, I'm horrible with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. But talking about relationships, I'm all okay, in it. Right. I'm happy. So I brought a lot of stuff to relationships. Mm-hmm. And then also, I was attracted to people. Like, I married two really good guys, but I couldn't stay with that because it didn't feel like home. You know what I'm saying? Well, messed up? Because home. I met- yeah, home for me was like a was like a disaster. It was like somebody was going to start cheating on me after nine months. That's why I was like, yeah, this is it. This is where <laughs> I belong. Daddy, yeah. I'm in love. Okay, you give me like the nice healthy dude, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. So I would leave those relationships in favor of a relationship that was going to be a mess. Oh, that was that was me for a very long about. time. I yeah. was the mommy person. Now I'm with a guy who I pray, I, and I know this might sound like, tip, but I prayed for, it and I just swiped, swiped I for him. I don't doubt it. it because when you're ready, it finds you. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you find it before you would have swiped left on that. Do oh, you know hell yeah. Saying? Hell yeah. yeah. But the, I think the only reason, I'm not going to front though. Okay. The only reason when okay. I did swipe right for right? him. Okay, now it's about me, guys. I'm sorry, but this is, you're going to learn. You're going to learn today. Finally there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but don't forget. F- family or fiance? That's right. On own? Ever, on own, Saturday night, 10 o'clock. And here's the thing. We're going to get into all this. You, it's like basically this conversation, yeah. except in real time. 
with the families present. But yeah, go well, ahead. well, let me let's let's talk a little bit about the, yeah. the family or fiance because right. there was two couples that I saw. Yeah, um, I had to get their name right because yeah. I, I butcher name Ashanki, Ashaki, Ashaki, and, and Chris. Ashaki and Chris. That was me. Okay, that one I will say was me. I was always, right. and that's why I swiped right on my Tinder. Oh, uh, because I saw a picture of him with two little girls, and oh. I always date guys with children. I oh, and they always I left me did. for the baby moms. What? Each and every one of wow. them. Oh, I was in between. And oh. so I was when I saw this, I was like, you could have saw it writing on the wall. You didn't right. see that in the beginning. Well, of course you did, but it's a show, so but Right. No, she didn't see it. Because I think I actually think Chris is, was, whatever, really in love with a shocky, but that doesn't mean just because you're in love doesn't mean you can stop doing whatever you're doing to manage your pain. And if what you're doing to manage your pain is like date a lot of women. Mm -hmm. Which, that's not going to stop just because somebody you're in a happy relationship yeah. with somebody else. That's what people don't get. But was it real love? Now, see, let me do the let's well, do the let's backstory. Yeah. Asaki and Chris. Asaki is Asaki. I keep calling it Asaki, Saki bomb. Sorry, okay. girl. I love you. Uh, uh, they're seven <laughs> years apart. Right. She is a young girl with no yeah. kids. He has four children. Three. Mm -hmm. Or three or yeah, four, three. 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 And the fi in the show, let, let's do the, the premise yeah. of the show. Okay. Go. So the premise of the show is there's two people who want to get married mm -hmm. and they're really in love and they're engaged and their families are not into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the show, we take the couple and their family members, three from each side, move them into a house in Bel Air and boom. And it's a beautiful house. Yeah. I'll babysit if house. you need it. Yeah. I'll house sit all day. <laughs> it's a beautiful house. And basically you put them in there and like things start to happen. Like in Chris's situation, mm -hmm. his boy ends up saying yeah. about he's a player. Right. Uh, in minute one. Yeah, yeah. Like as soon as he gets in the yeah. house. Like, I'm like, yo, dude, can you, you a hater. You are See, I don't know. I actually feel like what happens is, because there are times where the family members basically call out, like they put the, the person, they put him on blast. And yeah. the reason is because I think they see what's happening and who wants to be responsible for leading some 22-year-old beautiful young woman into what we know is a mess. So it's like, I think the families want, they want a healthy relationship to happen, and your family can be part of that. See, but no. He, Otherwise, he, he'd keep the secret. Yeah, he'll keep the secret, but when you say the family wants them to grow, it didn't work like that with, let me get the name right, okay. Ashley and, and Karan. Karan. Okay. Now, that one right there, mom okay. had problems. That's true, and sometimes mom has problems, like... A lot of times mom has the biggest problem because she has the biggest investment in her in her kid, whether mm -hmm. even it's the mom and it's the daughter. Because, you know, Ashaki's mom was the most against that. Mm -hmm. Karan's mom, the most against it. But And I think a lot of times that's because they have a big investment in their kid and they want to make sure that their kids are with somebody that they can work with and be in a family with. But when it comes to, was it, a Karan's mom? Yeah. It wasn't she was invested. She just, she chose the religion more than her son. Well, that happens. And you that know, bothered me. That That is a real thing. But can we just go back a bit? Okay. Because let's say... And I'm not trying to call them out specifically, but like, let's calling. just say you've got a guy like Karan who grows up with that mom. Mm -hmm. Is it any wonder that he wants to date somebody who's the total opposite of that? Yeah, like you always Ashley. do. But then, so the setup is in when she was raising him a certain way, that's the setup for the whole relationship. And she did not get that. No, she didn't. She thought that, well, he accepted me in the beginning as being bisexual because this one, well, boy, yo, the, the couples you picked, I'm here for it. Yeah. Especially when it came oh, to it Karan yeah. and, and Ashley. Like, oh, that and, one was my favorite and couple, the, too. Oh, yeah. And her friend. Yeah. you going to have First your all, side broad yeah. there with you. <laughs> you is a G, my yeah, girl. Right? <laughs> that was nuts. But you have people it's choosing true. between their fiance and their family. I right. said we said earlier <laughs> I would go with my family all day, but do you recommend people should go with their family or do you go with your heart? I, I gotta fix think my hair you cool. got it. What your hair? Oh yeah, it's false. Oh yeah. No, it looks we good. Right here. We <laughs> Keep Keep um, I think what happens is that. You got to go with what's in your highest good and the highest good of everyone involved, right? And so a lot of times I think what you see is, was it in, for example, 
Karan and Ashley's highest good to stay together right then. I think there was stuff that they needed to work out mm-hmm. that they they need to separate. I, I wouldn't have said this to them. I don't know what they need. But what I do know is that if you put them in the process, they're going to figure that out is as part of the process. But you said they should separate. Why? And did we because, give them the backstory because, of who uh, uh, Karan okay, and Ashley? So Karan and Ashley are a couple who... Um, uh, Ashley is, you know, they're a pretty wild couple, yeah, right? They're swingers. Pretty, well, kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. They and, like to bring people in. And Ashley's bisexual, which Karan is totally fine with until his mom rolls through. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no. Now, here's the thing, though. If your mom can talk you out of something, it means you weren't all the way there. True, true. So true. all the mom is doing is basically shining a light on where you're not totally clear about what you want. So if Karan can't commit to Ashley as she is right here, then that means um, they're better off separating until he can. True. And and the, and the reason Again, why Karan... Yeah, it is a process. The reason why... And I want you guys to watch the show Saturdays. 10 o'clock. Oh. Own. Mm-hmm. Hi, Oprah. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> Karan has a problem. Well, his mom has a problem. Is she's super religious. And yeah. we know that we have family members yeah. that will speak in tongues because yeah. she does on the show. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't want her son being with someone that's very wild. Like, yeah. cause Ashley's mom as well is a lesbian. She's in a, a long-term relationship, right? which I love their relationship. I know. It's cute, right? See, those, some of these families are so cute. Like it does show there's many ways to be happy in a relationship. Yeah. And so Karan, Karan's mom ends up, le- how many parents leave in the middle of these shows? Like the, the, this couple. is only two episodes I've seen. At least a couple. Damn, for real. You don't tell them, like, yo, you got to stay? You Because I don't see you, no, you interacting have, with the parents. I don't really interact with the parents. I interact. I'm not there to, like, make the family work. I'm there to help the couple move through the process of dealing with their families. Okay. So my, and that's good. What I what I realize is, see, when I'm there, people get on their best behavior. Mm-hmm. And when I'm not there, they act like they actually act. So that's what you want. You want to see who these people actually are, what they actually think of that relationship. And when and so I just work with the couple to like set the stage each morning. I meet with them. We talk about what happened the day before. We we give some um like tasks and things to do during the day and unpack what happened the night before and how to go moving forward. But is three days enough for family you know or fiance? It totally is. You would be surprised. Every Every couple moved through a process. They'd come in, they were super happy and in love, and by night one, and then the family comes in, and then the other family comes in, and then by night one, it's out. It's all coming out. Oh. And it- then they deal with it, and then in the dealing with it, more is revealed. And then by the last day, they're asking for the blessing. So you know how in The Bachelor, I don't know if you ever watched that, there's the rose ceremony? Yeah. Well, we have a blessing ceremony. So yeah. it's like... the. You're going to ask each family member for the blessing. And, you know, it's like tense while you're trying to figure out, are they going to get that blessing? Yeah, I thought, I really thought Ash, no, uh, uh, Shaki, mm-hmm. uh, Shaki and Chris, they were going to be fine. Because, right. every, you know, everybody said, mostly said yes. But then Ashaki was like, nah, I can't deal with this. Over eyelashes. I hope I'm not spoiling this, but I am. But you're still going to watch it, though. You should watch. Because it's, it's, not, it's not about how, it's not the outcome. It's how we got there. Yeah, how you know? we got there. So I mean, um, Ashaki decides not to go with him, be over eyelashes. She found in the house, which later on, you guys type it up. Yeah, at the end, there's he always like admitted. a little epilogue. Yeah. yeah it's like, he, he admits cheated. finally. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like, I mean, it was obvious. Like, dude, you really going to tell me eyelashes is going to Come off of a girl's eye, but stick onto your clothes, and you're gonna well, bring no, it all the way like, home. Those are my sister's eyelashes. Boy, bye. But your uh-huh. sister's. A, but I will say this: when you watch the show, you're gonna see how tight some family is <laughs> exactly. to the end. Because the sister was like, "Yep, that's my lashes. Yep, that's my lashes. Yeah. Yep, that's my lashes." Until until yeah. the truth comes yeah. out, and the girl said, "No, I don't want to be with you." But then you also have like um, Karan's family. Yeah. His sister. Yeah. Was just like. How many more of these episodes are we going to get, like, are are we going to, and I pray not, because this is on own, hands being laid or attempt to hands laid on somebody? Well, there got, there got to be a level of drama that came about in various episodes, but... 
like what? Give me a little taste. You ain't got to tell me who or what. But at least, is it mom's going to check on the, you know, like choke out the okay, kid? There's a, there's a situation with a brother where uh-huh. a brother is not having a fiance. And it's, he really is ready to go there in her defense. Get out. Mm-hmm. Okay, now. And is- he's a minister. Stop. I know he said tongues and then was like, I'm about to lay these hands on yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Now, are we going to get on the show? Like, we just saw um, Ashley and Karan's yeah. situation. She, Ashley had her old side piece yeah, there with her. Yeah, she did. Now, are we going to have... They're BFFs now, though. Yeah, they're BFFs. Yeah. Are we going to have a, in another episode, maybe a friend that's in love with... Well, I here's what I would say. Because here's the thing. There is a lot of drama on our show. Don't get it twisted. There is a lot of heart space. There are times you're going to have tears. There are people in having amazing reconciliation. There are people growing. Like, it's not just the drama. It's like it's drama with a purpose. Oh, of course. This is own. You know what I'm saying? So there is a lot of times where you'll just be like, oh, my God, that is real. Like, these are people being real, dealing with their relationship issues right in front of us. And it, it helps. I don't know. It helps me when I can see that other people are going through some of the same things I've gone through. And that's why I ask about maybe more of the drama because yeah. if a relationship is great, then there's really nothing that we want to yeah. really watch. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the drama, like I was in I was in a relationship and I've said this many times before. And if I was talking to you, I was with someone who would belittle me as much as possible. Oh. And I would take, I would and mind you, I'm I'll fight with what? you right back and forth. Right. And it was a point in the relationship where he grabbed me by my ankle and I went to defend myself, right? And I ended up going to jail for a night oh, shit. because of it. Yeah. Um, and then I still went back to him right. afterwards. If I came to you and was like, I went back to him, he talks to me wrong. Right. What would you say to me? I would be like, okay, look, you have to move out of agreement with that kind of behavior because at some level you were agreeing with it at some level and I, maybe it, not conscious mm-hmm. but maybe unconscious well not the physical but i was more of i felt bad for him because he would always say nobody changed my diaper when i was little okay. my mom he would always go back to that so for okay. me because he knew i felt so, bad all right so I mean, you were doing this other thing that's called where you love the man more than you love yourself you know what i'm saying yeah because you're taking care of him and being like oh i feel for him more than that little girl inside you who is experiencing some guy belittling her all the time. Because, you know, we have a grown self, but we also have a child self. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, um, I used to say it's like those stacking dolls. It's like the little you Mm -hmm. is 100% intact. And then there's all the other ages of you are in there too. So the little you was like having to endure that. And somehow you were caring more for the little him then you were caring for the little you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it needs to flip where you're caring for yourself first, like I said, and then caring for everybody else out of that. And I and I feel like I'm doing it, but then the fear of mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm with a I mean, I know what I'm with a great guy. Like okay. this man treats me so well and makes sure that I'm happy. And I do the same for him. I get afraid to bring that ugliness. Cause I'm, like any little thing, if right. I see him walking away, even though he like he's just walking away because right. he knows that it, it's, it's a it's a bad time to have a conversation. Right. But I'm thinking of my ex; he's walking away, so he could come back and just rip me in a new one. Uh-huh. So how do I make sure that I don't bring any right. little thought of that past into this group? Hey, Tinder. Okay, okay. I love him. So here's how. I love him. So again. Your mind is a really key part of being happy in a relationship. And if your mind is constantly going back to old things or you can't, it's almost like, um, you know how you're at a cookout and then there's the plates with the various containers Mm -hmm. and the beans go here and the potato salad goes there. Well, you don't want all that beans running into your, you know what I'm saying? I'm just looking for triggers. I'm like, oh. That's right. But that's your trauma. So you need to heal that. How do I heal it? Oh, my goodness. What about therapy? Have you started there? You know, I'm not going to lie. I've been trying to do therapy, but it's expensive. I don't have my insurances. You charge too much, honey. I'm going to need you to lower your price for me today. Okay. No, I'm kidding. So, but, okay. So then if you, okay. So then we got to get into like what kinds of stuff is going on from your past that is coming, that is being like, manifested in these relationships you know what i mean yeah, and there's nothing deep. in this one like in this one it's good no, I mean, as from some, childhood oh childhood you know and that's the thing like i 
came up in a great childhood. My parents mm-hmm. were to, they're together still. Okay. I mean, they argued like right. anybody's parents argue. So, you know, and that was one thing I wanted to ask you on, on the show. Do people usually use on family or fiance 10 p.m. on Saturday own? Mm-hmm. Um, do people sometimes just use that? Oh, it was my family, my mm-hmm. upbringing as an excuse. When I, for me, no. I don't feel that it is because, like, you shouldn't use it. I, my family, I can't use them as an excuse. No, but it's not that your family per se. It's more like every kid, every human being. There's no perfect parent, so everybody comes into adulthood with certain things that either happened or didn't happen that they're going to come into their adult relationships with. Even if you had a great intact family with mom and dad married and everything looked great and great, but there's still things that didn't happen or uh, old feelings you have or wounds you had or traumas you have. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So those are the things we bring in. And I'm not sure exactly what yours were, but if you want to figure out what where your wounds are, just track back for all the um, things that have happened to you in a relationship more than Really more than once. But if it's happened three times, you got a trauma there. Yeah. That's just a starting point. Damn, you're giving me homework. Too much homework. That's what I'm saying. You got homework to do. Everybody (laughs) does. Because even with the relationship you're in now, how long have you been in it? Going, or two years now. Oh my God, two years. Two years is good. So this is where you start to get to like the nitty gritty, right? Mm -hmm. Like some of your deeper stuff. Do you guys live together? Yes. Okay. So some of your deeper stuff will start to come into play as you get out of the honeymoon phase, which is like nine to 18 months. Just depends on the couple. Um, Some of the deeper stuff, like you're going to have three or four arguments that you're never going to start. You're going to have those problems forever because those are the differences between who you are, who he is. And like a couple has like a few a handful of arguments that they have, and those arguments never change. It's how you manage the feelings. It's how you manage your partner's issues oh. and your own issues. So it's not like the problems go away. I so wish don't they be looking would. for that. Oh, yeah, that's what no, I'm looking that's not for. Happen. No. The little wand that says poof, be gone. Yeah, no. So whatever the issues are, like what would you say your guys' big issue is? I know I'm going deep. No, no, it's all good. No, I think our biggest issue is that I want more for him to succeed than anything. Okay. So I'm I am very when it comes so to business, uh-huh. like for him, I'm just like, okay, you gotta get this done, this done, okay. this done. And because I've lived more than him, okay. we're both the same age, yeah. but I've done more. Yeah. I feel like we argue more because I've done it and I'm telling him, like, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, I'm warning him before it happens. I get that. Okay, because I'm a relationship expert, so naturally I'm in... I mean, can you imagine my poor boyfriend has to be in a relationship with a relationship expert? Yeah. Same. (laughs) So it's like I have all this knowledge and I'm always giving it out. I'm very generous. Yeah. (laughs) With with my knowledge and my encouragement. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so that's one of the issues. But underneath there is is something that's probably emotional for him. Right? Like, if you guys fight over it, it's because there's something emotional under there. It's not just because you're giving the advice. It's because you're giving the advice and it's landing on a human being who has that that's it's like um, we all have like inner landmines and it's landing on one of his. That's where you got to That's where the so you can either go, no, I get to do this whenever I want. I get to say whatever I want. Or you can go to that underlying emotional thing for him and go, oh, I get it. It makes you feel blank. No, men are not going to go, oh, ouch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never. Most men are not going to go, ouch. Yeah. So you have to start to see and identify when you've landed on one of his sayings. And I think I do. But then I'm like, yo, and, and I mean, I'm not saying it. In a, I'm just like, yo, dude, like, I'm not, I want you to win. I'm not, I'm not saying it like, yo, you, you ain't. But like, it's about how well you take emotional care of him. That's going to be the ultimate in how I'm happy the relationship is. is. It's not going to be whether he wins. It's. It's whether you can, because there's something under there for you too. So Mm -hmm. somehow underneath that issue is if you were to, you know, pull back the curtain, what would you see under there? A fear, a fear of not being taken care of, a fear of not being with somebody who's equal or somebody who, you know what I mean? This is going to affect the power balance in the relationship if he doesn't come up. So if you really want to get under there, you're going to have to look at what's under there for you. I know. Am I freaking you out right now? No. You, like, you get under there for what's under there for you, and you get under there what's under there for him. And hopefully both of you, he can go, oh, I get it. That's scary for you. And you can go, oh, I get it. That's scary for you. And you guys can come together and be real with each other mm-hmm. on it instead of just being in a fight. 
Which True. is how most people handle shit. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, all you do is fight and then later make up in great sex. Ow. Now, how but many... you can have great sex without fighting. So yeah, you but want... it's not about them fight sex. Like adrenaline. Oh. That's the something. It's a good one. Yeah. Where you're just mad and you're like, you're going to. Sorry. Okay. We adults. We adults out here. <laughs> we adults. But on Saturday, 10 p.m. on own, yes. family or fiance, we have Miss Tracy McMillan here. If you guys want to ask her any questions, but she gonna charge, you can make an appointment. No. But if, <laughs> but if you want to throw them little ones about the show, follow her yeah. on your social media. Yeah, follow me on Instagram at Tracy McMillan. I I do a lot of Q and A on my um, Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, it's a lot of like insights. It's about how to love yourself more. It's like all this stuff that I'm talking about. The journey is loving yourself more. And then out of that, you love others. Okay. And then I'm going to give you a homework. Okay. okay what is it? You're going to write a movie. Okay. About relationships. Oh, I'm working on it. Okay, cool. And yeah. then I'll be your lead girl. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, you want to act? Okay. Yes. I act every day on the radio. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> We heard that it's been an absolute pleasure. Make sure you guys take a watch of the show. It's absolutely fabulous. Yay. You're going to learn something. You're going to look in the mirror when you're watching it. Yep. It's family or fiance. Choose one, but you got to make a choice on own 10 p.m. Que Dios me lo bendiga hoy, mañana y siempre, which means make a...